Welcome to the Film Florida podcast. My name is John Lux, and I'm the executive director of Film Florida. Today our guest is Tony Armour. Tony is an award-winning filmmaker and the current film commissioner of the St. Pete Clearwater Film Commission. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today, Tony. Thanks for having me on, John. So you're a filmmaker by trade. So how did you get your start from that perspective in the industry? Yeah, that's my background. You know, it was one of those things that uh, growing up as a kid, I either wanted to be a college football coach or a filmmaker. Uh, so ended up going the filmmaker route, but it's one of those things that I didn't start with right away. I, I really, um, you know, did some filmmaking classes in high school in the uh, in the 80s, you know, shooting and cutting on 8mm film, which is a lot of fun, and then a little bit in college in the, you know, the, the early 90s, and then really never kind of picked it up again until, you know, 2000, 2001, 2-ish kind of thing, and just kind of jumped in and started making stuff and um, kind of building it from there. Of the film commissioner in St. Pete Clearwater. Well, you know, it's a 17-year-long uh, a overnight success story. Um, <laughs> you know, nothing ever happens uh, quickly, but I just sort of, you know, built a, built a career as, a, as an independent filmmaker, had my own production company for, you know, that I've had since 2002, doing a variety of things, anything from, you know, commercial work to independent film to surgery videos to whatever else. And then what most people know me for is that I uh, was a co-founder of the Sunscreen Film Festival that takes place in St. Pete that's going into its 14th year coming up in uh, 2019. So, you know, it's kind of this long background in history of putting it all together and living and working in the, you know, St. Pete Clearwater area. I got to know Jennifer Paramore, the former film commissioner, and just called her one day, and uh, I can't remember even what I was calling her about, and uh, she said that she was retiring. And I jokingly said, well, what do I have to do to get your job? And she said, well, you know, you should probably apply. I think you'd, uh, I think you'd have a pretty good shot at it. So I, uh, when the application process came open, I applied, and, and here we are. And, and now, so you've been in that role for a couple of years now. It was for, in the time that you came in, what would you say have kind of been like your main goals or your main initiatives that you've wanted to focus on? As we all know, you know, the state of Florida, you know, has not had an incentive program um, to, you know, attract those large, you know, feature films or even, you know, good-sized independent films to the area. So I've been trying to focus on, you know, just do the best with what you can. You know, the digital, the digital content is, is, is not, you know, a new thing by any means. It's been around for a few years. But I think that there's still, in some instances, as far as film commissions go, not enough focus in that digital space. You know, things like, you know, music videos or just influencers and in-destination kind of uh, projects that can still really enhance, you know, who you are as, a, as an area. Um, so that digital, digital content is something I put a, you know, put a big emphasis on. Commercial industry in Florida, you know, really is what, you know, carries the water for everybody here. And so, you know, you do what you can to, uh, you know, continue that and maintain that and keep that strong and grow that as well. Um, but when you've got, you know, beautiful beaches, it's not too hard to get those commercial productions down here to, uh, to shoot. So you try and do some, some other different things to grow the business and, and the digital space is, uh, you know, a big part of that. Going back to your, your time, you know, uh, studying, looking at your history, was it a concerted effort to go kind of throughout the country or did it just kind of happen by accident? It just kind of happened that way. You know, I grew up in Toledo, Ohio, so I started going to the University of Toledo when I first um, you know, was, out of, was out of high school. And so that was, you know, I was a communications major at the University of Toledo. And then, you know, life happens and uh, didn't end up finishing my degree there, but moved to Florida. And then, you know, a few years later, finished my bachelor's degree at Eckerd College in St. Pete and a bachelor's in business there. So it was just one of those things that was kind of a you know, evolution of just where I lived at the time to where I was going to school. And then as far as working on my MFA from uh, Academy of Art University in San Francisco, um, I didn't actually go to San Francisco to work on that degree. You know, the beauty of uh, sort of the modern world is, you know, you can do the, the distance learning kind of, uh, kind of thing. And so I was able to spend, it took me four years, you know, working on that MFA program. I, th I think it would have been easier maybe if I'd lived in California to do it, but at the same time, um, you know, so much of, you know, when you're working on a, um, you know, a, an advanced or a, a terminal degree like that, uh, it's a lot of shooting and 
editing and you know cinematography and you know doing all the sort of nuts and bolts of um, you know a film and film and television degree. And I had a lot of my own equipment and a lot of resources here from working with so many people over the years that you know I was able to take advantage and, and do a lot of that here. And again, the beauty of the the digital world is you just upload your projects and your professors are able to critique and grade and everything from there. So. Um, didn't actually live in California to work on that uh, on that MFA, but it's, it was a, a great experience. I really really enjoyed um, you know that school, and I think it's a top notch uh, you know uh, top notch degree. You had previously mentioned uh, the Sunscreen Film Festival, so you're the founder and the former executive director. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay, and I know you're still very involved and very fond of the film festival. So talk about your time as executive director uh, as well as, you know, the importance of sunscreen even still today. Yeah, absolutely. So today, you know, my position is as a a non-voting board member. Um, So I'm still involved and and active in helping, you know, guide the organization. It has has had a different executive director for the last uh, the last few years but uh obviously you know it's kind of like uh always been my my baby you know very close to my heart since founding it and i I think it's one of those things that um sometimes people don't realize the importance of having a large regional festival like that in your in your area you know we've been able to bring in i think this past year there were something like 75 filmmakers that uh that traveled in just to uh, just to attend the festival, and so you're able to you know showcase the area to these filmmakers. You know they get to meet other local uh, filmmakers and people in the industry, and as a result, we've had a bunch of films that come from out of town to shoot here over the years uh, because of that. You know, and then from a, from a tourism perspective, you know, uh, St. Pete Clearwater Film Commission is a part of the uh, the tourism office for St. Pete Clearwater. You know, it's it's great to just be able to you know be bringing all these people to the area to, you know, see the destination and experience it. So, you know, festivals can be very important, you know, from that aspect of bringing in uh, filmmakers. And then just from a, you know, from an arts and culture standpoint, it's a, you know, it's a great, it's a great thing to, uh, to have for, uh, for an area as well. So you guys use the, the film festival in a number of different ways there in St. Pete Clearwater because you're, you're bringing in, you know, people to spend money and, and be tourists when they come. Mm-hmm. But you're thinking of it even longer term than that, saying these are potential clients of ours that will see the area and then want to come back to do their next project or their next project, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I see it as a, as a total selling point. At you just even in the last, you know, four or five years, you know, we've had a filmmaker that comes to town, uh, has their film screen at the festival, gets a chance to see the area, and it's like, wow, this is really great. I'd really like to. I really like to shoot something here, you know. And you say that, and it could just be, you know, kind of that's, you know, you're just saying it to be nice or whatever. But then I make an effort and be like, okay, yeah, if you really do want to shoot something here, what, what do you have? What, what projects are you working on? And it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a horror film or a, you know, family-friendly adventure or whatever it might be. You know, what can we, what can we do to make that project happen here? in this area. Here's the resources that we have available. Here's the, you know, the companies and the people that you can work with locally. Let's make it happen. And we've had, you know, as a result of that, like I said, several films over the last couple of years uh, shoot here. And then even going back, you know, you talk about, you know, 10 years or more, we've had, you know, even before I was with the film commission, when I was just the executive director and the president of the board, you know, it resulted in people continuing to come back to the area and, and, and make projects. Speaking of tourism, uh, in Pinellas County, where you're located, you have one of the crown jewels showing the partnership in Florida between the film industry and the tourism industry in the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, where both Dolphin Tail and then Dolphin Tail 2 were filmed. So talk about the partnership that your office has with uh, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Yeah, we have a great relationship with the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Obviously, Dolphin Tail, when that came out, it had such a big impact on on that you know facility and that attraction that it was kind of this you know you wouldn't call it a an overnight success because the you know the the aquarium had been around for a long time but it was this overnight recognition for a lot of people who had no idea that it even existed probably for even for people within the state of Florida or, or you know not too far out of the area that didn't even know that it existed so you know we've always uh you know since you know that first film came out in 2011 i think you know had a had a great relationship with them and work with them on a on a variety of things you know because now just because they don't have any new feature films coming out doesn't mean that they're not still active and doing a lot of things they do a lot of 
um, you know, into a web series called Rescue Clearwater, uh, a lot of you know, video content for their YouTube channel. So just like I was talking about stuff in the, in the digital space, they've got a new uh, series that they're basically doing on Facebook, for Facebook video. So you know, it's a continuing partnership, not just between the Film Commission and Clearwater Aquarium, but also you know, the tourism office as well, because so many people are you know, coming in and uh, going to the aquarium. It's become such a, you know, a big part of the area from a tourism standpoint. Now, we're almost, we're coming up, uh, you know, it's, it's been seven years since that first film was released, and I believe the statistics are that you know, prior to the first film coming out, they had about 75,000 visitors per year, and now they're close to a million per year, and they're in the middle of a huge expansion. Um, they've really seen the benefit of what our industry, the traditional film and television industry, keeps referring to as the film-induced tourism. They're the, the textbook example of that, right? Yeah, they are definitely the poster child. Uh, yeah, to go from you know, whatever the number of visitors uh, was, you know, initially to now, you know, having a $23 million expansion <laughs> of their facility and adding new new tanks and really upgrading it and, you know, parking and that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't know that the, uh, the aquarium itself used to be a former water treatment plant back in the 70s, I believe, or the late 60s or whatever it was before it was turned into an aquarium. So it was never initially designed to be an aquarium. It's always been kind of a mishmash of, um, you know, how do you kind of put this together and keep growing in the space that it is. And so now, the, you know, the really cool thing is that uh, this expansion is, you know, specifically to reinforce, you know, what the aquarium does, uh, you know, with their mission of rescue, rehab, and release. So it's great to see, uh, great to see all that happening. It is. It is. Yeah, even this many years later to continue to see, um, you know, the amount of people, whether it's, you know, come here personally or they continue to log on to watch those uh, live streaming cameras of, of the dolphins of winter and hope. Um, yeah, it, it's a great place. We talked a little bit about, you know, the, back when you were doing your education and now some of the initiatives that you have uh, as the film commissioner. But as the industry continues to change worldwide, obviously Florida is no different. How has the industry changed just in the last couple of years, and what are you guys doing to kind of you know roll with those changes and make sure you give um, you know you're you're given the best opportunities to filmmakers that are here and locally as well as coming from out of town? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, so much of what we see is sort of from that educational standpoint, like you talked about. I, one of the daily things you know that I it seems like I get calls to my office are people just calling up and saying. I've got a great idea for a script or I've got this screenplay that I want to make. What do I do? And that's technically, you know, that's not our job to uh, provide, you know, we don't, we don't provide funding for, you know, for filmmakers. We do have an incentive program, but, you know, from people are, what people are thinking about initially is like, I need somebody to just make my movie. Can you guys do it? That's not what a, you know, it's obviously not what a film commission does. But what we've started doing is these educational workshops. Uh, once a month educational workshop where we're teaching people, you know, what they can do if they've got a screenplay or an idea and how do you really get it out there and how do you get that made to, you know, a directing for actors workshop or a color correction workshop. So providing these tools and resources for people, anybody in the community for free that want to learn these skills or enhance their skills to you know, make themselves better, basically. And again, you know, going back to everything digital, you know, really telling people that you don't have to just think about, you know, I want to make a TV series. Well, you can make a TV series right now. You know, it's called a web series. That's, I mean, you know, look at what YouTube, you know, and everybody else is, is doing as far as that goes. So, you know, trying to kind of educate people not just on the technical skills um, that they might need to create content, but also you know, what, what kind of the modern, you know, the modern world or the modern filmmaker is doing. It's not just, you know, make a feature film and then a distributor is going to pick it up and somebody will make it, somebody will put it out there for me. You know, what, give, give them the tools to do it themselves, you know, in the digital space, whether it's Amazon or YouTube or Vimeo or, or whatever it might be. So whether it's your time uh, currently as the film commissioner of St. Pete Clearwater or whether it's maybe something before uh, you got in that role, what are some of the more memorable projects you've been involved with and, you know, things that you're the most fond of through your time? Yeah, so it's, I guess it's kind of a, you know, a variety of things. You know, prior to being the film commissioner here, I've got a documentary uh, that, I'm, that I produced and directed called Running with Demons about a 
former drug addict who now competes in these like 300 mile triathlons. And that still continues to be something that, uh, you know, people talk to me about today. And it was 2014 is when that came out. But, you know, I still get people who say, I saw your documentary or, uh, you know, that was a really inspiring story. And, and, you know, it won some awards and things. And so that that's great. And then since I've been here at the Film Commission, you know, it was a great experience when we had Tim Burton in town uh, shooting Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So, you know, any opportunity you get to work with, uh, you know, a filmmaker like Tim Burton is, is, is really, is really great. Um, you know, just a cool, cool experience. Uh, to things like, you know, just this past uh, January, February, we had a film that uh, shot here called Bernie the Dolphin, and that is coming out uh, uh, later in 2018, and it'll be great to see, you know, uh, what the response is to uh, another dolphin movie shot in the area when that comes out. Tony, you had mentioned that in Pinellas County, where you're at, you have a program that helps incentivize projects that want to come and film in your area. Talk a little bit about that program and some of the immediate impacts you've seen. Yeah, absolutely. We have a business development program where, as a part of our annual budget, we have $500,000 set aside every year specifically to attract uh, and you know, incentivize projects to film in the area. And it can be anything from independent feature films to music videos, TV series, digital content, whatever it might be, you know, where it's very wide ranging. There's not a not a minimum spend. You know, we've had, you know, thirty thousand dollar web series come and shoot, take advantage of the program all the way up to, like I said, the Tim Burton film when that shot a few years ago. So it's something that without a state incentive program, you know, we're not going to be able to make this huge difference and, you know, bring these massive projects in. But a lot of times these two million dollar or less projects if you can get them to come to your area, you know, kind of call it the moonlight effect, you know, look what the, the impact that moonlight had as far as a, a film goes, and that was a small budget project shot in Miami. No reason we can't continue to attract those smaller projects where, you know, even 100000 or $200,000 as far as a, you know, a business development uh, fund makes a big difference in bringing it to your area. So that'll do it for this episode of the Film Florida Podcast. Thanks to Tony Armour for joining us, and thank you for listening. To learn more about the St. Pete Clearwater Film Commission, visit filmspc.com. That's filmspc.com. And, of course, for more information about Film Florida, go to filmflorida.org.